Hello, students. We are here in the actual lab today uh, because I can't perform this experiment in front or on the green screen material. So let's begin. We're on page 97 of your books. And the lab activity today is about pure substances. This week we've been learning about elements and compounds. So feel free to review your notes and material for this week before we even begin the lab activity. And the problem of today's lab simply states this. Do the physical properties of an element change? when it forms a compound with oxygen? Do the physical properties of an element change when it forms a compound with oxygen? Let me explain that. We're going to be taking two elements today. The first one is iron in the form of steel wool. Uh, we're going to be taking elemental iron here, and we're going to be taking elemental magnesium. Two metals, by the way, and you might want to refresh your memory as to what the symbols of these two metals are, iron and magnesium. And what we will be doing is forcing them into a chemical reaction known as oxidation which is a fancy word for burning. Burning is an oxidation reaction, which is to say we're going to force these elements to chemically combine with the oxygen in the air. And to do that forcing, we're going to be adding heat energy in the form of the Bunsen burner. So we'll be lighting up the Bunsen burner in a little while here, and then we'll be adding each of these separately into the hottest part of the flame of the Bunsen burner to see what happens. But what the question is asking you is this. As we examine the physical properties of these two elements, will their physical properties as elements change when we force them to become compounds with oxygen. Take a moment, think about it, and write your hypothesis at this time. All right, we're back. And the procedures here are very straightforward and easy. Uh, again, we're on page 97 with the lab activity, Pure Substances. And the first thing that you need to do here is to examine the various uh, the, the elements that we've chosen here, iron and magnesium, for various physical properties. In particular, I've noted some physical properties for you to be uh, checking out right in your book. Now, I'm going to hold each one closer to the camera so that you can see it and record your observations in the appropriate place of your observation section in your data table. So let's begin with iron. Here's the iron. You can notice its color, its ability to reflect light, its bendability. You can see the various characteristics, its color, luster, texture, flexibility. Take a moment and record your observations now for iron. And now here is a strip of magnesium metal, again an element Notice its color, its luster, its ability to reflect light, its texture, and its flexibility. Notice these various properties of magnesium in your book now. And now comes the fun part. 
The fun part where we're going to be getting rid of the paper towel, because paper towel is a flammable material, and we're going to be getting the Bunsen burner ready. So let me remove the paper towel from our work area as we get ready in setting up our Bunsen burner. Good opportunity now to review the steps, proper steps of lighting the Bunsen burner. We'll get to that in a moment. I have the burner, the striker. I have my safety glasses I'm going to put over my vision glasses. And we also have a uh, little forceps here that we're going to be using to hold on to each of these elements as we put them into the flame. Now, I believe it is going to be much easier for you to see what's going on if I simply turn the lights off in the laboratory. So I am going to turn the lights off in the lab, allow the camera to adjust a little bit. It's a very cloudy day, so I'm hoping it'll be light enough for you to see. But we are going to start with iron and then record your observations, and then we'll go to magnesium. So we'll begin with the iron, but first, do you remember the steps of lighting the burner? After we have familiarized ourselves with the unit, we get ready. I am going to be the burner person and the safety person. After we've gotten ready, we check the system. Check the tube is tight, tube is tight, jet is closed, valve is closed, and collar is closed. And now at this time, I'm going to shut the lights off, and let's see if we can get this lit and make some observations. Oh, good. I think you can still see me. All right. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. I am going to turn the system on and light the burner. There we go. Now, what kind of a flame do we have, everybody? A bad flame. How do we make it a good flame? adjust the collar. So now we have a good flame. I have the iron right here. The iron is in my little tweezers here, my little forceps, which I am now going to place into the flame. I want you to watch and listen and record your observations. And by the way, I know the camera doesn't pick it up completely well, but there is a light blue flame within the darker blue flame. We want to put the substance at, in the flame at the top of the light blue cone. That is the hottest part of the flame. So here we go. And once I put it in, I will notice, you will notice a reaction taking place. When we notice a reaction taking place, we'll remove it from the flame and observe. You see that? I don't know if there's any left. Let's try it. Oh, yeah. Check that out. So we know what the iron looked like beforehand. We can see what's happening here now. It's like mini fireworks. It's so cool. I love this. Whee! And after a while, we will see that no more reaction is taking place. And that's when we know all of the iron has mixed with as much oxygen as it's going to, because now, well, it's just boring. So I'm going to put that on our lab table, and we're going to examine that when we are finished. But pause the video now to record your observations of the iron combining with oxygen. All right, we're back. 
And now I have the strip of magnesium ready to go. So again, I'm gonna hold the tip of the magnesium into that hottest part of the flame. When I see a reaction taking place, I'm going to remove it, and I want you to note the observations. Are you ready? Here we go. Whoa, blinded by the light. Woo! Check that out. My goodness, I have a blind spot in my eyes right now because that was overpoweringly bright. But I just so happened to have another strip of magnesium in case you missed it. <laughs> because this is really fun. Sorry, chemistry can be lots of fun. <laughs> So we are simply combining an oxidation reaction between magnesium and oxygen here. So you want to see it again? Do you want to see it again? I can't hear you. Let's see it again. Here we go. Whoa, baby, that's bright. Woo! And when it dims out, we know the reaction is complete. Now, in a moment, I'll show you the results of the, uh, I'll show you the end observations here of what happened to our iron and magnesium when they combined with the oxygen. But first, how do we properly shut down this Bunsen burner flame? First, we close the collar to get a bad flame. Move our hands away. Gas jet, shut it off. Wait for the flame to burn out. Then close the valve. Nice job, everybody. I am now going to turn the lights back on so that we can make a close-up observation of our iron and magnesium. Stay tuned. All right, so we are back. I'm keeping my goggles on because we are dealing with uh, material that has fine particles uh, it's not burning still, but uh, we, we still want to be safe until we're all finished. So here we go. I'm going to hold up for you the iron and compare it with your observations from before. Here's the iron. It, oh, oh baby, I'm going to, hold on a second. I'm going to hold, hold it a little bit further away from the computer. Actually, I'm going to move the computer closer to me so that we can see this a little bit better with the white background of my lab jacket. As I touch this iron, it is extremely brittle. It falls apart into dust. Now I want you to keep something in mind. This isn't iron anymore. This is no longer an element. This is now a compound. And the compound is iron oxide. And the question is, have the physical properties changed of this iron? It's getting all pulverized into a little pile of filings, basically. So record your observations, pause if you need to, while I'm getting the magnesium ready. All right, now for the magnesium, I'm going to lower the camera so that you can see it on the black lab table here. And I want you to notice how it looks. By the way, here was the iron. It's into a powdery dust right now because it is no longer iron. It is iron oxide. And here, remember what the magnesium looked like before? Now, check it out. 
it's white and powdery. Why? Well, because it's no longer magnesium. What is it? It's magnesium oxide. It is now a compound. Have the physical properties changed? Record that in your observations. And while you're in your observations, at the bottom of your observations, I'm asking you to write a chemical equation for both of these two reactions. Use the guidelines that we talked about yesterday to help you out. When you're finished with those equations to the best of your ability, then I want you to write your conclusion. Remember, your conclusion attempts to answer the problem of the lab activity based on your observations with this lab activity. I'll be providing some links for you in Google Classroom to help you study for tomorrow's quiz. And be sure you do study. Uh, and as far as this lab is concerned, I'm going to clean up the mess after I say to you, bye-bye.